Welcome to Living Life. Uh, one of the most interesting things that's happening in Germany today is the ongoing prosecuting and convicting of Nazi criminals way past their actual crimes. You know, a span of three weeks, uh, we had a 94-year-old woman that was prosecuted. Uh, we had a 100-year-old man that was charged, and including a 94-year-old man that was actually convicted and sentenced to prison. Uh, it doesn't sound normal. It doesn't sound like something that uh, perhaps is done often. Uh, but these people were brought to justice uh, 60, 70 years after their actual crimes. Uh, and the way they do this is because the country wants to make sure that they don't forget its past. Uh, they also want to ensure that these things don't happen again. And most importantly, uh, they want to see justice served. You know, we want to bring justice to those who break the law. Uh, too often we see people getting away with things and we feel like there's not enough justice in this world. Uh, but what does that mean when that justice has to be applied to us? Uh, that we need to be judged or held accountable uh, for our own actions. Uh, perhaps then we won't be as comfortable. You know, today we'll be reading uh, Matthew chapter 25. And towards the end of this chapter, uh, we see Jesus once again teaching his people, teaching his disciples and his followers. Uh, but today, he talks very specifically about the notion of justice. Uh, not our justice, uh, but actual heavenly eternal justice. Uh, join me in reading today's passage. Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by My Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave Me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in? or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Jesus begins today's passage uh, by showing us a glimpse of the future, of what is to come to us. Uh, he begins by saying, When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Uh, Jesus says, all the nations. Uh, when this moment comes, it will be all the nations, that no one will be excluded. And everyone there will be divided into two groups. Uh, we have his sheep on the right, and we have the goats on the left. Uh, so what is the difference between these two animals or these two groups? where the sheep represent the people of God. 
Uh, he says there's the people that belong to the Father, those who are blessed by him, uh, those who are joining him on the inheritance and belong to the kingdom of God. And the goat on the left, uh, well, it's a little bit different. Uh, they're the ones to be judged, and they're the ones to be punished. Uh, but what differentiates the two different groups? What makes sheep a sheep, and what makes a goat a goat? Uh, there's a stark difference between the two. Uh, even though both stood in the presence of Jesus, and both did not know that Jesus was with them, uh, they responded in totally different ways. And that's the difference between the two. Uh, the sheep, Jesus says, they fed Jesus. Uh, they gave him something to drink when he was thirsty. They invited him in him, they clothed him, they took care of him, and they visited him when Jesus was in prison. Uh, and the goat, they did the total opposite. Uh, nothing to eat, nothing to drink. They didn't invite him in. Uh, they noticed that he was without clothes, but they didn't help him out any further. They noticed that he was sick and in prison, but once again, they chose to do nothing. You know, surprisingly, uh, both groups respond to Jesus' words with shock. They're saying, you know, when, when did I see you, Jesus? I don't remember seeing you. Uh, whether it's the sheep or the goat, they both respond in the same way. They go, Jesus, I don't remember ever doing these or not doing these things for you. Uh, but to them, Jesus gives the exact same answer. He says, truly, I tell you, whatever you did or not do for one of the least of your brothers and sisters, uh, you did or you did not do for me. You know, it's not about how we acted in the public. That's what he's trying to say. Uh, it's not important how we treat those who are considered important or powerful or for doing it outwardly in front of everyone. You know, if Jesus came down right now and he just plopped down in Times Square in the middle of New York City uh, and everybody knew he was Jesus and he just kind of like went down and everybody, all the news, uh, news was on him and they figured out who he was, uh, I guarantee you in that moment, everyone will be willing to help him and they'll be willing to serve him because they know he's Jesus. Uh, they recognize he's Jesus. They'll do anything that they can at that moment because they know he is the son of God. But Jesus is telling us that it's not about how we act when it's convenient or beneficial or easy, uh, but what we do when it's not any of these things, uh, when it is difficult, when other people are not watching us, when it comes purely from our hearts. He's saying that service to the least is a mission of the heart in both public and in private ways. It means that we need to follow in the ministry of Jesus to follow in his humility and his willingness to serve others. You know, Jesus could have had uh, uh, an audience with any supreme ruler on this earth, uh, yet he spent all his time with the sick, he spent all his time with the marginalized, uh, he spent time with those who were in need, what other people might consider dirty or sinful, Jesus chose to be with them and to actually serve them. You know, we might not be held accountable in this world for what we do, both good and bad. Uh, but Jesus promises us that all the nations, there will be a time when all the nations will have to stand in front of him and they'll be accountable for all that they have done. And justice, uh, his justice, true justice, everlasting justice will be served and it will prevail in every one of us. You know, we find ourselves in the middle of the season of Lent right now. Uh, not too long after, we'll be uh, celebrating Easter together. Uh, but right now, especially during this time of Lent, uh, let us reflect on the contents of our hearts. You know, I'm sure many of us right now are fasting something, whether it's like uh, sweets, uh, social media, coffee, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, but to add to that, during this time, if we have not done so yet, uh, let's ask ourselves, what can we do to truly serve our brothers and sisters? What can I do right now in this moment to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and to be able to show and witness Jesus Christ inside of me? And perhaps the most important question is, who around me is the least of my brothers and sisters? What can I do for them right now in this moment? This passage today is actually the end of what we call the Olivet Discourse. It's a series of teachings of Jesus in this section that are so important. 
Uh, but the point that he makes throughout this Olivet Discourse is that life is fragile, uh, that life is a gift from God. And we need to recognize it, that all history, including us inside of it, uh, will come to a climatic finale when Jesus returns to us. Uh, so knowing all of that, what are we to do to respond? How are we to live our lives? I pray that everyone here today worshiping with us will be able to remember these words of Jesus, uh, remember his promise that he will return and that all nations will stand in front of him. And don't allow that to be a source of dread or burden or fear, uh, but one that completely frees us to be able to surrender, to be able to live according to his will, his very good and perfect will for us. Uh, let us all pray. Uh, dear Lord, we thank you for once again giving us these words of Jesus. Uh, we pray, Lord, Father God, that as we hear these words and hear these promise of Jesus, uh, that we're not filled with dread. We're not filled with extra burdens or weights on us. Uh, instead, we are freed from all that burdens us, and we're able to let that all go and surrender all of that at the feet of Jesus and be able to respond accordingly with our lives. Uh, let us follow in the footsteps of Jesus uh, with humility and with service and just openness to everyone. And we pray, Lord Father God, especially that during this time of Lent uh, that we are able to recognize and be able to serve the least of our brothers and sisters around us. Uh, Lord, we thank you and we love you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.